Well, the iBreakfast is a uh, forum for um, uh, executives uh, in the, the dot-com space, which we now call digital media. Mm -hmm. And it, it began uh, 12 years ago in 1997. And uh, as a breakfast, because we had a, a bigger show um, on interactive TV, mm -hmm. and we wanted to um, uh, uh, create a little bit of a promotion for that event, so we ran this breakfast and we invited executives. And what happened was the interactive TV show died, and people kept calling us, when's the next breakfast? So we ran the breakfast business. We have two kinds of events. We have this event, which is more of an information, like this is a hot topic. Whatever the hot topic is, we'll bring in uh, leaders in that field that are available to talk about it, to discuss it, and to interact with the audience. The other events which you do are usually in the evening are for startups where they, we put um, uh, entrepreneurs in front of investors and they pitch their business plans. So those are two quite different things. But in fact, when we started out, what, what really happened when we started out is that we discovered two things. First thing was, uh, we, we discovered was that the, the suits don't really get the digital media. And, and, and that was the case then. It's still the case today. But what happened when we started was um, the, the, the dot com and the internet experience was really understood by very young people. And it's not just because the young people were, um, were born into it. What really happened was, um, starting in about the early 90s, uh, colleges gave students a free internet account. So if you went to, to any good school, um, you got a free internet account. So they were using it. And, uh, and the worse student they were, the more they spent, the more time they spent on the internet. So that meant when the internet broke in 1995, uh, you had a whole generation of people who had four years of experience using it. What to do, search, and, and just the ideas and products, downloading music, whatever it was, they knew the ins and outs, and they'd lived on it for four years. And they weren't worried about making any money. They were students. Mm -hmm. They lived on pizza and, and, uh, and, and daddy's uh, expense account. So when the internet experience broke in 95, um, anybody over 25 had no idea what it, was, what it was really about. I mean, they read about it, but they didn't really understand it. Whereas you had a generation that had four years experience. And uh, there was a, one fellow that spoke at our event, Bo Peabody, is one of the first guys to make a lot of money with tripod. And he even said, um, you know, it was lazy guys, like the B, the B guys, the B students, made all the money because we just hung around and uh, hired all the A students to work for us. And we paid them with pizza. So, so that's number one thing we learned. So we really are the business of explaining the internet revolution to people over a certain age, okay. 30, 35. So we, we, we talk to suits. That's what we do. We talk about cool things to suits. Don't really get it. First event, somebody showed up there in a leather jacket and, uh, and wrote a check for a million dollars to one of the people that was showing off their website. Really? We probably raised somewhere between 40 and 50 million dollars. I mean, we don't, it's, it's, we can't always, because there's a lag. So, like, for example, you came to our event on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. um, if the deal comes out of it, the, the earliest probably is three months. Uh, social media is, it's, it's a phenomenon. I mean, the, the way to really describe it, I mean, there's two ways to describe it. One is the technology. The technology just enables people to connect with other people, uh, to share information, to see what other people are saying, talking, it's, it's personal ranking. Uh, in other words, you can see, you know, how popular this person is, how popular I am. But the, the real story about social networking is that um, what, what formerly was the province, what, what, what big companies could do, you know, in, ever since it was TV, radio, is they could make a brand of themselves, they could make themselves noticed, they could uh, find out how important Coca-Cola is more important than Pepsi. And so they, um, they, they became famous for being Coca-Cola. With social networking, it enabled the spectators, people who were just used to watch, suddenly become part of the game. And, and so what, what emerged, and, and this is why it was so hard for older people to understand, because it, we never thought of it as a possibility, but young people got it right away, and that is that they could make themselves a brand. 
they could make them. It wasn't just about talking to people. It's about competing. How popular can you become? Mm-hmm. So in, in the old world, you were either popular or you weren't. There wasn't a lot you could do. Today, you can make yourself more popular. You can have more friends. You can show. You've been to more places. You can write more blogs. You can make yourself useful, and so you could grow your popularity. And famous. And now my children, you know, they just go to Facebook every night to see, you know, who went where and who's popular and what are they wearing. How many so, fans we have. All of that stuff. So it, it's become a way for, for individuals to brand and popularize themselves. They, they, they actively are uh, uh, creating their own and promoting their own personal space. But That's really what it's about.